Good morning, welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. for fun, food, and fellowship. Sometimes we're later, sometimes we're earlier. But one thing for sure is we meet together because we love our master and we love each other. To, if you live in the Somerset or St. Curry, Curry region, uh, jo- feel free to join us. If you want a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, and um, conservative politically fellowship to be involved with, we're the ones for you. I pray that if you do come that you will uh, give us a chance and receive what we have for you and for each other if you decide to come and join up with us. Today is Sunday, December 4th. It's hard to believe it's December 4th of 2022. All I can think is, where is the time gone? But our apostle, apostolic fathers did tell us that the end of times, with the days we're living, the, the days would speed up, and they are. It said, they said that the um, climate will be confused. It is. We are living at, at the 6,000th year of human rule ended in March of 2021. Uh, t- all the stuff that's going on, the Bible talks about, and we, should, we as believers should never be surprised at the evil that is presenting itself to us in the in the world today isaiah told us that in the last days good would be seen as evil and evil would be seen as good we are there so we need to continue to pray for each other build each other up in the faith and pray that the father will prevail i'm going to tell you that i want everyone who's listening to the sermon whether our followers that are on YouTube or those who are with us. We need to pray that Herschel Walker will prevail. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Senate will do some really dangerous and hateful things. They already did it with the Act of uh, Marriage Act. Defense, it's called the Defense of Marriage Act. That is a despicable, terrible law And I hope that the uh, upcoming Congress will peel it away uh, because um, they're praising evil and they are denouncing true marriage between a husband and a wife. So let's pray that um, we, that our new Congress will prevail and that this, um, this egregious law will be put to rest we pray that we want to pray for Herschel Walker and we need to pray for Carrie Lake so keep her in prayer too because the Katie Hobbs is working very hard to steal the election from her but they can't they can't do anything legally until the the um, election is certified so they're going to certify Katie Hobbs and then they can um, do the lawsuit. I pray that that lawsuit will prevail because no one should have their um, future stolen from them like that, ever. All right. Today is the the first Sunday of Advent. We're not going to be covering that so much, and we're not really going to cover it this year. We've covered it a couple times in the past, but we will be talking about Christmas from this time on, starting on December 11th. So I'm going to pray now. Father, we come into your presence in the name of Yeshua. Your name is holy, and we want your name be held holy in our hearts and lives. Father, we pray that you will bless us for our obedience to you. We pray that you will strengthen us with all might and power according to the wonderful work you're building within us. I pray as I preach this sermon that nothing that you, uh, uh, that everything that comes out of my mouth will be completely from you, and that you will withhold the words coming from me if there's anything in this sermon that is not of you. Let me be a conduit of truth and preach out with power and let the seeds of truth permeate the airwaves as, even as we speak so that they will fall into the hearts of those who don't yet believe and that they would produce fruit that would bring them to salvation. We honor you, Father, and we praise your name. I pray, Father, for our friends in Uganda. 
there that government needs to be shaken up turned upside down and inside out so that righteousness will prevail in Uganda we pray father for Israel where our brothers and sisters in Yahweh keep facing struggles and and battles it we know that peace won't come until you return as the king of kings and master over all rulers in the meantime father i pray we pray that you will keep the people of israel safe and that the God, good news message that's preached there from corner to corner from border to border of israel will also prevail and bring your people the jews into a relationship with their true messiah yeshua and that they would rejoice along with their evangelical counterparts throughout the world we ask you to be glorified in this sermon and that we would be edified by its power and by its truth we thank you father for our friends who are in cuba we pray father that you will encourage them and let them know that their chains can be broken that their strongholds can be destroyed that the footholds that have been placed against them will be removed and that they will find life health and hope and courage in the word that they hear today and we pray also for patience cindy and um, gina that they would be encouraged by the truth that is going to be presented behind this pulpit today we praise you and honor you and glorify you now father and when we take communion father let us do so worthily in yeshua's name amen strongholds are broken spiritually through yeshua he helps us know their structure and how to tear them down again i'm t today is december 4th of 2022 we can only look for better things because the last couple of years have been so hard. Um, but <laughs> voicemail, my sworn enemy. Voicemail is my sworn enemy. I have never understood how it works. Finally, I broke down and called the office operator to walk me through it. I can send you the, an instruction sheet, she said. I responded, great, fax it over. Sure, she said. But fax it right back. It is my only copy. Well, I got a few giggles. All right. Ephesians 1, 16 through 23 is the scripture that's going to be described in, in different ways throughout the sermon. I pray for you constantly, asking Yahweh, our, the glorious Father of our Adonai, Messiah Yeshua, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of Elohim. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of Elohim's power for those who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Messiah from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at Elohim's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world but also in the world to come. <coughs> Elohim has put all things under the authority of Messiah and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the congregation. And the congregation is his body. It is made full and complete by Messiah, who fills all things everywhere with himself. A spiritual stronghold is a supernatural fortress which believers build and are captives to. We may must break them down to be free. Now that's the introduction headline. Our enemy, the adversary, uses strongholds built from self-lies, generational curses, declared curses, and what the word calls doctrines of demons to protect and hide demons from our discovery. Paul describes the resources he took advantage of in triumphing over all the, of his adversity. 
Paul had the trials of 2 Corinthians 6, 4, and 5. Yet he also had the weapons of 2 Corinthians 6, 6, and 7 for victory. 2 Corinthians 6, 7 says, Elohim's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. The idea of using weapons of warfare in the right hand and on the left is that of holding both offensive and defensive weapons. They are both used in advancing an attack and being attacked. Spiritual warriors use the shield and the sword. The sword is in the right hand, the shield on the left arm. Elohim's power works in us and through us to breach strongholds for us to utterly destroy. Our, our, I'm sorry, only Adonai, our Messiah, can take captivity captive and set the prisoner free. He provides the subsequent expulsion of demons from their hosts, but each host must seek him for deliverance. A stronghold is a fortified dwelling used as a means of protection from an enemy. The enemy is not able to stop the weaponry of Elohim's word. It breaks down strongholds and sets prisoners free. The ministry of deliverance is about bringing spiritual victory and freedom to those who are in bondage to fallen angels and demons. It is about breaking down strongholds that we construct. No believer can be demon-possessed, but he or she can be demon-oppressed. Elohim's word calls one who is oppressed or possessed demonized. One is in inner captivity, and the other is external. For each unbeliever, demonization takes place with, from within. For believers, demonization comes from evil outside sources and phenomena. Either way, demons are invited by their hosts unwittingly. Did you hear that? Either way, demons are invited by their hosts unwittingly. We'll talk about that later. Those of us who have ministered in the field of deliverance know that those who are stuck in demonic bondage or strongholds have in some way opened the door of assault into their lives. My strongholds began when Julie and I dealt with the demonization that was assaulting my mom and our niece and her family. I do not recall how it happened, but in victory I was also defeated. This happened because circumstances intruded into my life and I recklessly opened the door for Satan to get a foothold and create a stronghold in me. This is hard to admit. It is my only path to victory. I had, to, had a tear in my spirit and was defeated before I knew what was happening. I was conflicted over my lack of discernment. I ended up experiencing per personal failures that seemed insurmountable. As we discussed two weeks ago, when we give in to Satan, even when our actions seem innocent, we give him legal ground to build strongholds in our lives. Then he blindsides us with his advances. Isaiah 61.1 quotes Messiah. The Holy Spirit of Adonai Yahweh is upon me. For Yahweh has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of Yahweh's favor has come, and with it the day of Elohim's anger against their enemies. Elohim's word provides the good news message of deliverance to those held captive to their strongholds through Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. Elohim's power is in the good news. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, I am not ashamed of this good news message about Messiah. It is the power of Elohim at work, saving everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the foreigner. This good news message tells us how to Elohim makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith 
that a righteous person has life. And that leads me to point one. We build spiritual and emotional strongholds that our powerful forces taken us captive. Elohim's word provides guidance for our deliverance. The point is that whether any of us needs to tear down strongholds, break up the legal ground given to over to demons, cast demons from the demonized, or a mixture of all three, it is still deliverance. Deliverance from demons set captives free from the strongholds that all of us has, have built for ourselves at different times. When we recognize the demonic strongholds we face, we can tear them down. Only through Messiah can we be free from strongholds and generational and declared curses. It is the doctrine of demons we hear that seek to distract, deceive, and confuse us who seek freedom. If we want to be freed from our strongholds through Messiah Yeshua, we must submit ourselves to him in every area of our lives. We will never be freed from our strongholds without his power. Amen. Now, there was a song done during the 70s. It might have come out during the 60s. And one of the verses says, If he's not Lord of all the rooms in my heart, he's not Lord at all. We have to understand what that means in our lives. John 8, 31 through 36 reveals, Yeshua said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. Now, this is kind of funny when they say we have never been slaves to anyone. They were in Rome, occupied Israel at the time. I can just see Roman soldiers or centurions walking by Yeshua and his disciples or I'm, I'm not sorry, I mean, the uh, leadership elite in Israel, when, he, when they were saying this, it's like, I can just see him go put his hand on his hip and just, you know, look, really? They, they were surrounded with captivity. What do you mean you will be set free? Yeshua replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a, a, a son is part of a, the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Messiah Yeshua is sovereign Adonai, our Savior. Now, Adonai, is um, the transliteration of Adonai is, is um, kyrios, the Greek word for master. Adonai means owner, creator and owner of the universe. It means that he is equal in power to Yahweh. Adonai is the pre-incarnate name of our master and savior, Yeshua. So I don't like using the word the Lord for him because that's a feudal term and many times lords <coughs> in different countries had tr mistreated the people that were under their authority. He does not do that. He loves us and wants us to be his own. All right, I'll get going. He created the universe, both the spiritual and the physical. He provides truth that sets believers free from their strongholds when we submit to him. From our Heavenly Father's viewpoint, when we wage battle on his terms, he calls us into a deeper intimacy with him. He helps us to understand Yeshua more and to experience the reality of his love. Galatians 5, 5, and 6 declares, We who live by the Holy Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness Elohim has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Messiah Yeshua, there is no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. As the Holy Spirit continues to empower us for winning personal battles and overcoming personal failures in battle, we can see, then see ways to minister to others that will bring glory to our Father. 1 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4 declares, All praise to Yahweh, the Father of Adonai, Yeshua, the Messiah. 
Yahweh is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can t comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort Yahweh has given us. When Satan is winning the battle, it is because we encounter increased oppression. We then arrive at tolerating sin. By tolerating sin, we then fail to experience the Father's love and loving others. Elohim's word is very clear about the nature of supernatural battle which is waged, waged for our minds and hearts. But we are responsible to turn away from tempting thoughts as well as sinful actions. He can't make us do that because he chooses not to make us do that. We have to do that ourselves. If we don't do that ourselves, we have no chance of being able to uh, break down the strongholds that hold us back. Again, like a, like a snowball surviving on a, a grill during the middle of summer. Supernatural warfare is waged for our heart, minds and hearts. It will be won or lost by our focus. When we fail to wage warfare according to Elohim's word, we are then taken captive by our strongholds. When we wage supernatural or spiritual battle according to Elohim's word, we then break out of the strongholds we have constructed for ourselves and overcome Satan's arsenal of lies and death. 2 Timothy 2.26 tells us, They will come to their senses and escape from Satan the devil's strongholds but they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. When we entertain thoughts and participate in activities that are contrary to Yahweh's will, we open ourselves to demonic oppression from the sinful activities we participate in and build strongholds. When these thoughts and activities become habitual, we build up resistance to holiness and build a spiritual fortress, a stronghold from demonic lies and their influence. We start believing their lies. Satan is our main supernatural opponent. Elohim can build strongholds of salvation in Messiah, which protect us from Satan's schemes and deceptions. John 17 reveals our protection in Messiah. John 17, 11 and 12, Messiah prayed, Holy Father, he was saying, Abba Yahweh, Daddy, and we should say that too. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them from the power of the name you gave me. When we focus on Messiah and submit to him as Adonai, he will fortify our hearts. He will work on us both the will and to do, of his good, to do his good pleasure through the mighty power of Elohim's Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 tells us, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use Elohim's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing Elohim. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Messiah. Do you think these are this passage is referring to unbelievers? No, it's referring to believers, nominal believers, fallen believers, backslidden believers, who, uh, who all of us have at one time or another allowed ourselves to not listen to the truths that are in Yeshua. True strongholds in Messiah include Elohim's word, Yeshua's name, our strong tower, his blood, along with humility, holiness, the full armor of Yahweh, and heaven's weapons of warfare. Proverbs 18.10 declares, The name of Yahweh is an unassailable fortress. The righteous person runs into it and is held in safety. Another definition of a spiritual stronghold is a demon, demonic fortress of thoughts that allow demons to control, dictate, and influence our attitudes and behavior. They will oppress and 
discourage us. Believers cannot be demonically possessed, but we can let them filter and choose how we view or react to negative circumstances, situations we find ourselves in, or even people we fellowship with. A demonic stronghold is any self-indulgent that exalts itself above the knowledge and worship of Elohim Most High. Anything that takes our focus off Him becomes an idol and a stronghold. Mistaken beliefs or self-lies come from wrong doctrines or lies we have believed that keep us from finding the truth that is in Yeshua. Only finding and applying truth in Messiah will set captives free. And that takes me to the next point. We must humble ourselves before Elohim's provision for our lives and destinies. It is only in Yeshua the Messiah that we find deliverance, destiny, and success. Either thinking too high now listen to this. Thinking e either thinking too highly about ourselves or not highly enough about ourselves is pride. When we think too highly of ourselves, we are saying we are more important than anyone else. We are not. Romans 12:3 says, "Do not think of yourselves as more important than you really are." Be honest in your self-evaluation, measuring yourselves by the faith Elohim has given us. When we wrongly believe that we are less than Elohim says we are, it is pride. We are telling him that he did not create us correctly and that he made a mistake when he created us in the womb. Psalm 139, 13-18 reveals, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your word, workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book of life. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. When we do not believe highly enough about ourselves, it is pride because this is the foundation for rebellion and indicts Elohim's creative nature by saying that he made junk when he made us. Psalm 8, 3 through 5 tells us, When I look at the night sky and see the work of, of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should take care for them? Yet, you made them only a little lower than Elohim and crowned them with glory and honor. David realized Elohim had created us a little lower than heaven's angels in this life. This is evident in the way humanity is lower than the angels' present glory, power, and nearness to Yahweh. Though created a little lower than the angels, our destiny is to be crowned with glory and honor that surpasses heaven's angels. It is our destiny as redeemed Yahweh's children to govern angels. Job declared Elohim's hand guided our formation from conception to death in his loving care. We are unequivocally precious in Yahweh's heart because he does not create junk in any form. Let me repeat that. Please absorb this. We are unequivocally precious in Yahweh's heart because he does not create junk in any form. Job 10, 10 through 12 declares, You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh, and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. That is probably the strongest scripture passage for pro-life that I think we, any person can come up with. Our Father is pro-life. Those who advocate for abortion are worshiping at the uh, throne of Moloch, the false god of Israel. He is Satan, known as Baal. You need to stop and think about what Yahweh feels about the uh, uh, about pregnancy and the birth of children. 
Just think of it. Elohim knew in advance our lives, failures, and successes. He looks at us through the rose-colored glasses of the Rose of Sharon, through Adonai, our Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. We were designed to be who we are, flaws and all. Contrary to popular beliefs, these flaws are not manufacturing mistakes, but what Elohim used, uh, intends to use to glorify him and bring others to him. Now, I didn't put this in here in, from scripture, but the disciple, there was a guy who was blind and deaf from birth, and he was brought to Messiah, and the apostles asked him, what did he do that caused him to be born blind and, uh, and deaf? And he said, he was born this way to bring glory to, Yah to Yahweh the Father. He was, an in he was intentionally given his impediments because through his healing, he would bring glory to Yahweh the Father. So don't look at our impediments as something to be uh, feel as being disgraced by, but through them we can bring glory to Yahweh the Father. Amen? Amen. And like I said, Elohim is pro-life, and we should follow his example. Through his immense love, he protected and guided our conception and proves that he wants us to live the full life he provided to us. Elohim gave us life in Messiah and has made us made believers his dear children. He wants every one of us to be successful in the destinies that, um, that he has prepared for us. So we should be obedient to his will. Romans 12, 6 tells us, Elohim has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Elohim made no mistakes in creating us. He created each of us with a specific destiny and given us our personalities and the supernatural talents and abilities to be successful in those destinies. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through Messiah, the one who gives me strength. After intense study of this verse in the Greek and translating it from its context, I asked the Holy Spirit to help me understand this verse. This is the translation I believe I received from him. Philippians 4.13 says, I can achieve every plan, goal, and task given to me through the overwhelming power of Messiah, who gives me the strength and ability I need to perform every plan, goal, and task he has assigned to me. When we apply Elohim's word of truth to our lives concerning his love for us and claim the blood of Messiah, we can break every stronghold Satan has succeeded to build into our hearts and minds. As we pray and seek Yahweh, and exercise his presence. We build the discipline necessary to think properly of ourselves and learn how to experience the love Abba Yahweh our daddy has for us. 1 John 4, 7 through 9 exhorts us, Let us continue to love one another, for love comes from Yahweh. Anyone who loves is a child of Yahweh and knows Elohim. But anyone who does not love does not know Yahweh, for Elohim is love. Yahweh showed us how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not made up, not temporal. Not that we loved Yahweh, but that he loved us and sent his Son to, as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Yahweh loved us first, and he loves us best. Trusting in anyone or anything else for freedom and deliverance outside of Messiah is not only rebellion and idolatry, but reveals an arrogant heart. These will bring severe consequences. Make no mistake. 1 Samuel 15.23 declares, Rebellion is as sinful as the act of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. When we put our trust in Messiah alone for deliverance, we then tear down strongholds of self-lies. When we submit ourselves to Elohim's protection, 
we then become able to resist all self-lies. Submitting to the Holy Spirit destroys wrong beliefs that keep us from finding true freedom in Messiah. It enables us to build strongholds against Satan's lies by the power of Elohim's protection. James 4, 5 through 8 exhorts us, Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that Yahweh is passionate that the spirit of the new nature he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, Elohim opposes the proud but pours out grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before Elohim. Resist Satan the devil and he will flee from you. Draw close to Elohim and Elohim will draw close to you. When we trust in Elohim's protection and stand firm in our faith in Messiah's ability to take us through our spiritual battles, we find that Satan will flee from us, bringing us relief and safety. When we humble ourselves before Elohim's provisions for protection, I'm sorry, provision for protection, it brings honor and blessing to him. In this we are exercising our faith in Messiah and committing our obedience to him. 1 Peter 5, 5-7 exhorts, Clothe yourselves with humility as you relate to one another. For Elohim opposes the proud and pours out grace on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of Elohim, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Propel all of your worries and cares onto Elohim, because it matters to him what happens to you. James 4 and 1 Peter 5 declare that Elohim's immense grace and unrelenting love will be lavished on us for our faith when we humble ourselves before Elohim and his provision in Messiah. If we exalt ourselves above, above others, it comes from a misplaced form of pride and creates strongholds in us that keep us captive within the, its fortified walls. But if we humble ourselves, we will be honored. When we humble ourselves before Yahweh and give honor to our Heavenly Father, He will exalt us and honor us. He will restore us to Him and provide an intense and intimate relationship with Him. Point three. It is only in the name of Yeshua that we can demolish the strongholds that are built on, in our hearts. It is only in the name of Yeshua that we will find freedom. Satan is our accuser, enemy, and destroyer. He seeks to destroy those who trust in Yeshua. But Yeshua gives us health, eternal life, and deliverance through his good news message and word. John 8.44 tells us he, Satan, was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. All Messiah's followers have been provided divine power in Yeshua's name to defeat Satan, fallen angels, and demons. He alone has all authority to make these powerful enemies submit to us. Second Peter 2, 2 through 4 declares, May Yahweh give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of Yahweh and Yeshua our Adonai. By his divine power, Yahweh has given us everything we need for living a Yahweh-filled life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. May Yahweh give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of Yahweh and Yeshua our Adonai. Grace and peace are ours by knowing Yahweh and Yeshua our Adonai. As we grow in a deeper and more intimate understanding and knowledge of Yahweh, we receive grace and peace as the essential foundations for his deliverance and for living a truly righteous life. 
Yahweh gives believers everything we need for life and to show complete devotion to Him. Everything! Everything we need to reflect Yahweh's true nature in us has already been given to us. Living by grace and having peace of mind and heart are the essential foundations for breaking down all the barriers and strongholds that Satan, with our help, has built to keep us from Yahweh. By his divine power, Yahweh has given us everything we need for living a Yahweh-filled life. Not only grace and peace, but also all things in regard to life and righteousness are ours, knowing him. These are the promises that enable you to share or have partnership in his divine nature. This is one of the great mysteries of our faith. It is that Yahweh shares his nature with us and in us. The Greek word for share is koinonas and means to participate as a partner, to partake of, to be a companion with, to have fellowship with the divine nature. Knowing this is the key to deliverance. We are given birth by the Holy Spirit to be Yahweh's true sons and daughters. Every father imparts his DNA and his nature to his children. In Yeshua the Messiah, Yahweh imparts his DNA to us. The Greek word for nature is physis. It is taken from the Greek word phyo, which means to give birth birth, produce, bring forth, or to grow up. Messiah lives in us and transforms us into his own image. In Messiah, we share with him the divine nature that comes from triune Elohim. We will bear the image of the true man from heaven, Yeshua the Messiah. We are utterly destined for victory. Knowing Yahweh and Yeshua, the Messiah, Adonai, is the key to receiving all things in regard to life and righteousness. We cannot have the ability to break down strongholds without the Trinity. Colossians 1, 19-22 declares, Elohim in all his fullness is, was pleased to live in Messiah, and through him Yahweh reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Messiah's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from Yahweh. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Messiah in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Remember, he sees us as we will be, not as we are. When we have put our trust in Yeshua the Messiah alone for salvation, we not only receive him, but we receive every person of the triune Elohim. When we have one, we have all. All of them. Since Messiah Yeshua is indeed the king, high king over all kings, and sovereign Adonai, the ruler over all rulers, Every knee will bow in obedience to him, whether by compulsion or from desire. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 proclaims, Elohim elevated him, Messiah Yeshua, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Yeshua every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will declare that Messiah Yeshua is sovereign Adonai, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. What this means for our deliverance from the sin life that caused our strongholds is that the name uh, that is above all names is Yeshua who lives in us. His powerful name can destroy our strongholds. His name is the most powerful name in all of the universe's dimensions and invisible realms. We must never ever lose sight of the importance, power, and nature of Messiah Yeshua's name. As I started out this study on breaking down the strongholds that keep us captive to our old natures, I warned you in these last days we were waging a fierce battle against Satan for our minds and hearts. 
We will never be able to rid ourselves of the strongholds that keep us captive to our old natures in the power of our old natures. It is only by taking our minds and hearts back that we will be freed. Now, by allowing our old natures to transform us by our old natures, it's sort of like asking the fox to visit the chicken um, uh, coop. It's, it's like um, politicians looking, uh, um, watching over their mistakes and presiding over their mistakes or their lies. Um, we cannot in any form in our old natures deliver us from our old natures. It just, it's amazing that we can think even close to that. It is only through praying in the Holy Spirit, studying and meditating on Elohim's word, calling on the name of Yeshua, and claiming his blood that we will be able to take our thoughts captive. It is only in the power of Yeshua's name and the covering of his blood that we will be able to tear down the stronghold walls that keep us captives to our old natures. Be encouraged. It can be done. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 declares, Although we live in the natural realm, we do not wage war, wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our supernatural weapons are energized by the divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes Yahweh and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of Elohim. We capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the Messiah. Charles Spurgeon marveled at the concept. He declared, These things come to us through the, His divine power. Divine power! What stupendous issues are grasped in that term? Divine power. It was this which digged the deep foundations of the earth and sea. Divine power. It is this which guides the marches of the stars of heaven. Divine power. It is this which holds up the pillars of the universe and which one day shall ta shake them and hurry all things back to their na native nothingness. After we demolish the strongholds that kept us captive to our old natures by the all-encompassing power of Yeshua's name, then we will, be, will, we will be able to take every thought by making them obedient to Messiah. Our minds have only one voice they recognize, but there are other voices that invade our thoughts and minds that mimic our internal voices. These are called familiar spirits. They know us intimately. They know how we think and how we react. And these familiar spirits can lie to us and make us think we are listening to our own voice. They are demons of dissension. It is because of this that we must wage supernatural warfare to take our thoughts captive and bring our mind's eyes back, on, back to focus on Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith and receive freedom. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 exhorts, Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us freely run with endurance the race Yahweh has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Yeshua, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside Yahweh's throne. Yeshua's heart was focused on the joy of knowing that we would be his bride. This was the joy of our salvation. He had his eternal bride always before his eyes with joy. We would be his forever. This joy and focus empowered him to go through his agony on the cross. Instead of remaining in heaven's glory with Yahweh and heaven's angels, he chose us, his bride, as the joy set before him. He desires us to the point that he laid down his life and being Elohim for all eternity to be with us. He pursued us, not seeing our weaknesses, strongholds, and failures, 
but seeing us as we will be. Yeshua saw us perfect in his eyes even before the first foundation stone of creation was laid. He saw what we will be at the end from the beginning. This joy caused him to become human. Because we have every person of the Trinity dwelling in us, or Yeshua the Messiah dwelling in us, we have all the power and ability we need to break down all strongholds built by our old natures. When we give in to our old natures and allow them to have control over our new natures, we let the d demonic voices of our enemies discourage us. We can even misconstrue other believers' motives. We tell ourselves that our state is hopeless. We tell ourselves that we are held prisoners with chains that cannot be broken out of the cells of our strongholds. We say that we cannot prevail. All are lies. We need to continuously take our thoughts captive from our external enemies who try to deceive us into believing we are struck, I'm sorry, we are stuck in our strongholds with no way out. Messiah's power will destroy them. Messiah exhorted his fellow Jews by telling them that their worship of Elohim is a far, or was a farce. We must never let ourselves ever again fall, fail, fall, I mean, to this type of unbelief we exercised from our old natures. Matthew 13 and 14 and 15 reveals, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. Because the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. Yet Messiah told his apostles and us by fiat that those he has set free are completely, totally, and undeniably free. He said of himself, whom the Son has set free is truly freed. Totally freed! Colossians 5.1 declares, At last we have freedom. For Messiah has set us free. We must always cherish the truth and firmly refuse to go back to the bondage of our past. Paul has made it at this point over and over again. The Christian life is a life of freedom. Yeshua came to set the captives free, not to keep them captives of their strong to their strongholds. He freed us from them. Galatians 5, 13 through 15 warns, You have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law, referring to the Torah, can be summed up in this one command, Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always abiding and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Before our strongholds are demolished and the prophetic spirit of Yeshua has empowered our minds with his sufficient influence, believers with spiritual strongholds are the first to find fault with us. We have to be careful not to shoot our own brothers and sisters when they are fighting to be set free from spiritual strongholds. Satan uses other believers against one another to prevent their freedom. It is worth asking those in our sphere of influence how they see us as people of freedom and liberty or of bondage and strongholds. Many believers are perceived as captive to their self-built limitations. In conclusion, there is not a believer anywhere in the world we live in who can say, I have never had strongholds nor been captive to the desires of my old nature. That would be a colossal lie of biblical proportions. We cannot break down strongholds on our own, nor without the help of other believers. Love tells us that we will fracture from within if we do not draw alongside those who have been taken captive. We must rely on each other, pray for each other, and be vulnerable with each other if we are going to overcome and demolish the strongholds that keep believers captive to their old natures. Strongholds can be people places or things that have gained control over our lives 
one way or the other and are often set up and empowered by fallen angels and demons through lies and deceptions. A deception. Strongholds are built when we surrender legal rights over to demonization by giving them the right to take over our lives. Demons cannot be exercised if we do not break their legal rights from us. Fallen angels and demons gain legal rights from us not so much because of what we may have done, but because of what we, in ignorance, did to invite them in to build strongholds in our lives. We believers rarely allow demons and fallen angels' legal rights to purposely influence our lives and cause us to build strongholds that hold us captives to our old natures and keep us from Yahweh. Sometimes we are caught up in innocent activities that demons and fallen angels distort, which, came from, uh, which cause us to fall into personal failures, which complicate our lives and strip us of our freedom. Uh, strip us of our freedoms. In the natural, we are susceptible to lies and accusations from Satan, fallen angels, and demons. They use carnal believers to shoot us when we are down, instead of drawing alongside to help us get up. We need to be sensitive to the needs and heartbreak of our brothers and sisters in Messiah. Alone, we cannot break our strongholds. It takes triune Elohim in conjunction with believers for deliverance. So in benediction, Isaiah 54, 14 through 17, All will be right and good for you. No one over you will oppress you, and you will not be afraid. You will, not, you will be far from trouble, for it will not come near you. If anyone brings trouble against you, it will not be, not be from me. Whoever comes against you will fall because of you. I myself have made the workman who blows on the fire to give it more heat and, and makes a sword for its work. I have made the destroyer to destroy. No weapon that is forged against you will prevail, and you will prove wrong every tongue that says you are guilty. This is the gift given to the servants of Yahweh. I take away their guilt and make them right, says Yahweh. Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his shalom, perfect and complete peace. Amen, amen, and amen.